Hey guys, Brad here with Custom Offsets. We're this is going to be an episode of I Never Knew, and it's called BDS Shock Selection. And what we're going to do is talk about um, if you ever have looked at a BDS kit, they always offer multiple, or I shouldn't say always, they usually, on most kits, offer choices for which style of shocks that you can get with your lift kit. Um, the standard one, which we'll talk about first, that's kind of how we're going to work down the table here from least expensive to most expensive. And so we'll start off with BDS's standard shock that comes, um, is the standard option for their lift kits, which is called their NX2 Nitro Series. And so a little bit about this, obviously this is going to be the base model standard shock. It's not the best, but it's, it's by far not the worst shock. Um, it's probably, you know, a lot better than some of the other cheaper brands out there. Um, one of the things that I like about this shock is for the price, and since it's a base model shock, it comes with this nice uh, silver metallic finish on it. I don't know, maybe we'll get some close-ups later, but it has a really nice finish on it. This is a steel-bodied shock rather than these ones, which we'll get to later, which are aluminum. Uh, the one drawback, there's, there's positives and negatives to a steel body. Steel body is cheaper to produce, so you can get a good performing shock, shock with a steel body. Steel body will rust, and steel body doesn't dissipate heat as well as aluminum, so um, th that's always something to keep in mind. And this is gonna be, uh, it's a pressurized nitrogen twin tube shock. And each one of these is valve, valved specifically for the vehicle that um, it's chosen for. So if you are buying a lift kit for your 2015 Chevy 1500 and you choose these shocks, these shocks are going to be valved per that vehicle and same with any other vehicle that you uh, choose to go with on these. So like I said, that's gonna be the NX2 series. That's the, that's, that's the base shock. So when you go and look at a kit and the base price shows you, say $2,000, this is gonna be the shock that is included and unless otherwise noted. And then we're gonna move on down the line. The next shock that we have here is gonna be probably one of our more popular choices. It's gonna be the Fox 2.0 series shock. And this is gonna be the upgrade. Uh, usually, if there is an upgrade, that's usually between the NX2 and the Fox 2.0. First thing that you notice about the shock is the body. It's a fully CNC machined uh, T6061 or T6 6061 aluminum body. The whole thing is one piece of aluminum. You know, there's no seams that are welded here for the top eyelet. Um, and as we talked about before, this is made out of aluminum. So the big advantage of aluminum body shock is it resists rust and it dissipates heat up to three times faster than a steel body shock. So, you know, maybe for the regular daily driver, honestly, the heat dissipation thing is not gonna really matter. But if you are taking it off road or going over a lot of bumps or you, you know, you're cycling the shock a lot, um, having an aluminum body to dissipate the heat faster is definitely going to be a benefit to you. And these as well are custom valves by Fox for the specific, specific vehicle that they're chosen for, for the application. And then also one of the special things about these Fox shocks is they use a specially formulated Fox racing oil, a shock oil inside of these shocks. You'll notice that these are Fox 2.0s. And what that means, some people don't know, the 2.0 would be the outside diameter of the body in inches. So it's like a, it would measure, basically if you go down here, you can see it'll measure about two inch, a little 2.01 inches. That's gonna be a two, two inch shock, which would be the outside diameter. If we go back to the NX2, this is also a two inch diameter body shock, so a 2.0. Um, that usually dictates the size of the pistons inside. Uh, the larger the piston, the basically 
greater dampening effects it can have. So like I said, this is going to be the Fox 2.0 series, which is a really nice shock. Uh, it also comes with these nice build aluminum ends on the bottom that are black anodized finished. And uh, they have these little bump stops on them as well, as you can see here, that they all come with. And then moving on down, we get into the big money stuff here. This is going to be a coilover setup, which would be a, on a standard, uh, this is going to be a Fox 2.5 series, two and a half series coilover. This one I believe is off of actually a, a Raptor or an F-150. But this is the standard coilover that comes in your coilover kits. Uh, some of the differences on this you'll see right away. Obviously this has a spring on it. BDS and Fox use Eibach as their spring supplier. So Eibach is the one who produces the springs that Fox uses. They come in a nice silver coated powder coat as well. Uh, the body of this shock is going to be, it's a smooth bore alloy body that is uh, zinc plated to help. Obviously the plating is to resist corrosion. And you can see you have the reservoir hanging off here. And the reservoir, what that does is increase the fluid capacity or nitrogen capacity of the shock to have a greater, you know, if you watched our other video, we talk about how external reservoirs, what they do is it allows greater capacity for the uh, nitrogen and the oil so you can dissipate heat better if you're cycling the shocks um, at a higher rate than say a normal street driving or whatnot. That's when it becomes beneficial. A lot of times people just think it looks cool because you got this huge reservoir hanging off the top that says Fox and you know you're badass because you have Fox coilovers. So there's that. And then um, these are going to be, for these coilovers, they're not, they don't make them for every truck. There's only certain models in, of certain trucks that BDS makes coilovers for. Um, for instance, the older Chevy, say 99 to 06 torsion bar trucks, they don't make, at least on 50 hundreds, they don't make a coilover kit for. Um, usually it's more of the newer trucks that they came out with this and are producing them for. You're not going to find them for your, you know, 97 F-150. Um, it's mostly the newer stuff. But then we're going to move on down to this one. Pretty much the same. This is, this is uh, what they call their DSC coilover. And that's what we'll get to in a minute. It's called, it stands for a dual speed compression. And here it's a pretty much the body of the shock and all of what's inside is pretty much the same. Uh, you know, iBox springs on the outside. Oh, you know, I probably should mention uh, one of the things or benefits of a coilover, as you can see the body of the shock here is threaded. And what you can do is you can turn this adjuster here with a spanner wrench. And if you tighten it down, it'll compress the spring and it'll help lift the truck up or increase the spring rate depending on um, the setup you have. So that's one of the main advantages of a coilover setup. And also it's very compact. It uh, keeps the coil spring and the shock in one place. But back to the DSC, this is going to be uh, BDS's most expensive option in terms of their shocks. The DSC, if you can zoom in here on, this, on the external reservoir, you'll notice on the end you have a blue anodized and a gold anodized knob, which you can see on this other one here. It just has the nitrogen valve, Schrader valve on it. So what this does is it basically, it's really nice because it allows you to adjust your compression rates for high speed and low speed. And that's going to be a, a cyclic rate or how fast the shock is cycling. So say for instance, if you want to go down the highway and you want the best ride possible on the highway, you can adjust which one, the blue one here, you'll turn the blue one here and you can turn up or increase the dampening of the shock at high speeds or turn it down to lessen the effects of the dampening at high speeds, which will allow for a smoother ride. And then you, and you can adjust the low speed one as well. So say if you're going to be off-roading and you want, you know, a softer ride off-road, you can turn this down and then turn it up for on the, when you're on the road. So you have more control when you're going down the road 
as opposed to off-road. So that's the big advantage of the DSC. It's about a $200 difference between the standard one and the DSC. So besides the fact that this is adjustable, um, one of the drawbacks or I guess restrictions that um, the engineers have when designing these shocks is, you know, this is a set dampening rate, so this is not adjustable, this shock. So basically they have to choose um, performance for best on and off-road when how they, uh, you know, valve the shock and figure the dampening rates out because people are probably mostly going to drive on-road for certain shocks. And so, you know, they set the dampening to perform the best of both worlds, whereas this DSC allows you to do it depending on the type of terrain you want to be or plan on being on. So that's what's really nice about this DSC option. And that's pretty much it between the two. Like I said, th this is going to be the most expensive. And then this one here, and we'll go through the prices real quick. When you price out a BDS kit, um, as I mentioned earlier, this is the standard shock. So this is going to be included in the price of the kit unless otherwise noted. And then we jump up to the Fox 2.0, which is usually the next upgrade. Typically, I'm, I, I'm not going to say every time because I can't say for sure if it's every time. But from what I've seen on all the trucks, it's pretty much a pair of these is going to be cost an extra $150 to add it onto your kit. Whereas a set of four is, a, is about $300 additional that you add on top of the base bright kit kit because you're basically replacing these with these with these Fox shocks here. So like I said, um, say on a newer truck with struts up front, you're only going to get rear shocks if you get replacement struts up front for the lift. In the back here, you're just going to get Fox shocks. So you'll only get a pair. So it's an extra, extra $150 as opposed to $300 for all four. And then when you step up to the coilovers is when it gets really pricey. I have written down here. Just going from regular shocks to a coilover setup, you're looking at an additional $1,500 for a coilover setup. And then if you want to go to the DSC coilovers, it's about another $200 on top of that, so about $1,700 more for the DSC. And for the most part, you know, I guess from what we see for what people are using their trucks for, I'm a big fan of just the regular Fox 2.0s if you're looking for an upgrade. Otherwise, the NX2 is perfectly fine. It's a nicely built shock. Um, one of the things that I like look for in a shock most of the time is how well it holds up over time in terms of the finish and the durability of the finish. And, you know, because we see a lot of trucks that come in and even the newer trucks with, you know, shocks that probably only have a year on them or two, the bodies are all rusted and the paint's coming off and they look like shit. I almost dropped this. Yeah, so when they come in and they look like shit, and that's, so that's one of the big things I look for is a shock that has a nice durable finish that will actually stay looking nice and doesn't just flake off and rust away. So that's why I like these uh, BDS stock shocks as the standard shock. And then of course the aluminum shock um, now isn't going to rust, although aluminum can corrode, but it will not rust um, like, a, like a steel body will. But uh, pretty much for the most part, this is probably going to be your best all-around bet, the Fox 2.0. And then if you really want to spend some money and get, you know, the top of the top, I would look at the uh, coilover setups. Um, you know, we've done a couple here. And a lot of time, you know, they come out of the box adjusted. With They basically have this, uh, the adjuster already adjusted down some to increase spring rate a little bit to preload the spring some. And so sometimes people think that they ride a little stiff, but you can go in there and loosen them up and uh, you know decrease decrease the spring rate a little, so that you got adjustability there as well. So there's big adjustability on the coilover side, whereas on the standard two-inch body shock size, um, not much adjustability. So there's always that to think about. You know, it always it all depends pretty much on how much you're willing to spend and what what you value and what you're looking to do with your vehicle. So if you have any other questions, let us know right into us and we'll try and make a episode to answer your questions for next time. Signing off. It's almost time to go. See ya. Bye. <laughs>